Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Maddie. I'm a reseller on eBay, Poshmark, and Mercari. And in today's video, we are talking about AI and using AI in your reselling business. Now, artificial intelligence, AI is definitely a controversial topic. There's pros and cons to AI. I know, especially as someone who loves to read, I have definitely been up in the author side of things of wow, were they going to use AI to, you know, steal my narrative voice and create books saying that, you know, it, it's my book, etc. And, you know, actors, obviously, that was a really big deal. They were picketing for AI, all of the deep fake videos. So there's definitely a lot of negatives when it comes to AI. I am very aware of that. I think it's an, an interesting technology, but I do think that there can be benefits maybe to using AI and today we're just going to kind of like play around and see how we can use AI in our reselling business. I'm not saying for sure that I am going to use these tactics in my business. These are just some ideas. So let me know in the comments down below if you have ever used AI in your business or after this video if you plan to use it. But let's get started. So I do have chat GBT pulled up this is open ai and i'm gonna see first if it can help me write a description for an item so just typing in like a pretend item that we have so i'm gonna put can you write a poshmark description for a free people let's say a free people boho swing dress size medium Let's see what it comes up with. Okay. That's a lot. <laughs> like, I never write that much. I don't, I can't even get someone to read, like, pre-owned no flaws or pre-owned missing a belt. So to write all of that, I don't know that anyone would actually read it, but maybe like keyword to be pulled. So just kind of skim reading this. We're not going to read it all. Um, so looking at it, this is the description. This is what I would put in, you know, the condition, the description category part of the listing. Indulge in timeless bohemian elegance with this exquisite free people swing dress. I mean, like it's, it's definitely over the top. Um, so there's definitely some good keywords like sophistication, laid back charm. It tells us the size, size medium, an enchanting dress. A flowing silhouette so that could be like a good keyword again I just don't know that I would necessarily like want to copy and paste this for every single one of my listings like that seems kind of like overkill Let's see if it changes if I say eBay instead of Poshmark and I put Poshmark let's put eBay can you write and we gotta be grammatically correct here an eBay description for a free people boho swing dress size medium so let's see how it changes. So it's giving us the same exact thing for eBay, it seems. It really doesn't seem all that different, except down here it does like reiterate um, some of the different things that I should put in, whereas on Poshmark it didn't put all of that. So condition, that's interesting that it automatically went to brand new with tags. I never put in the condition whenever I was putting in this request. Um, it did give us the size. It suggests that we should probably put the material, the color, um, it gave us the style and the brand, but you can see like the actual paragraphs of description that I wrote out. They're very similar. Like it even starts in indulge with the bohemian chic. So it's like very similar language. Again, I just don't see myself like copy and pasting all of that, but I do know some people definitely do write boatloads like that. I, I guess I just err on the side of like, I really can't get anyone to read a sentence. So to read that entire description definitely does seem like overkill but with that said i do know like if you were to go to the free people website it would probably have something like fairly similar to this so i do have to wonder if they write these descriptions for seo maybe something to think about just because it would give you that extra keywords to stand out let's see if, what it does whenever i say to put in a title can you 
write a Poshmark title for, let's change our, let's change our item. Let's put it for um, a marine layer cotton stripe t-shirt pre-owned size large. I mean, that gave me like nothing. Like I could have just written that myself. Certainly, here's a catchy Poshmark title for your marine layer cotton striped t-shirt. Marine layer striped cotton tee size large, parentheses, pre-owned. I mean, that gave me nothing. Let's see if, again if it changes when I change it to eBay. So let me copy my original requests and then instead of Poshmark, let's put eBay. Again, it's pretty much the same. Marine layer cotton stripe t-shirt pre-owned size large. So it doesn't really give me any keywords there. Let's see though if it will give me some like keywords, some style tags for certain brands that are accurate. So I'm gonna go with a brand that I know pretty well, which is Eileen Fisher. When I think of Eileen Fisher, I'm thinking of words like minimalistic, uh, closet staples, career wear, maybe more like mature woman, um, sustainable. Let's see if it gives me similar words to that if I ask for Eileen Fisher style tags, keywords. Okay, can you describe the fashion brand Eileen Fisher with style tags? So just looking at the style tags, um, it definitely does give like a really good description of Eileen. Um, effortless sophistication, curated, versatile. I mean, I definitely uh, understated luxury. I definitely agree with all of that. I say Eileen Fisher's pieces are timeless because they are very like basic, one color, minimalistic pieces. Minimalistic is number two. Sustainable, that's one of the ones that I definitely did say. Eco-friendly, she uses a lot of really good fabrics. Sophisticated versatile relaxed silhouettes a lot of her pieces are you know baggier they're not really form-fitting high quality fabric clean lines that's a good one that i've never thought of and then effortlessly chic so i mean that's pretty accurate let's see what it says if i change it to shein so opposite end of the spectrum so i'm going to copy what i put about eileen and then paste it Except we're going to change Eileen and we're going to put in Shein. So if you guys are unfamiliar with Shein, Shein is fast fashion. It's horrible for the environment. Okay, so here are some style tags it gave me for Shein. Trendy. I mean, they do make a lot of very trendy pieces. Affordable, versatile, fashion forward, casual, chic, streetwear, statement pieces, variety, and budget friendly. So all of those are definitely true. I don't disagree, so it does seem like chat GPT can definitely differentiate between different brands accurately because both of those are true. We could probably keep going with other brands, like let's say, let's paste it and let's do more of like a mid-tier brand. Let's do Bowdoin. It even recognizes that Bowdoin's a British fashion brand, vibrant and playful designs. I absolutely agree with that. So vibrant, playful, classic, quality craftsmanship, impeccable fit, enduring appeal, timeless, whimsical, versatile, colorful. I mean, all of those seem like pretty accurate. Let's see if it can give me a brand based on a style that I'm describing. So let's see, can you name five lag and look brands? Let's see. Okay, I've never heard of any of these brands. Oska, let's look up Oska. So looking up Oska, let's see. It does look kind of lag and looky. Linen pants, airy summer dresses, sustainable. It's definitely interesting. Um, if we shop Oska, spring, summer. Okay, new collection. Yeah, it's definitely a very lagging look. It's definitely very expensive. We're looking at $569 for a linen dress, guys. Oof. 
$399 for a linen shirt, but like it definitely is lagging look. So chat GBT is, is accurate for that. So if you were just wanting to look up like below brands in a certain category, it seems like they're going to do really well. Let's see a different one. Rentholds. Again, I've never heard of fashion brand. I've never heard of Rental. Um, this seems kind of, okay, there it's definitely looking like layered look. That's a lot. Again, we're looking at very, very expensive lag and look brand. So let's change the parameters because it did give me lag and look brands, but I don't ever foresee myself finding those. That'll be good to know, like if I'm ever really wanting to commit some luxury brands to my memory, but can you name five lag and look brands that retail between, let's put 50 to $150. So I haven't heard of any of these except for Bryn Walker and Flax. Okay, I've heard of Bryn Walker. I've heard of Flax. I've never heard of Coco and Juan. Coco and Juan clothing. It's on Etsy. That's interesting. So it's pulling up mostly Etsy, Facebook. I'm not super getting lag and look vibes from it sort of some of them so this one seems maybe not as accurate i'm starting to see more lag and look type of styles it's definitely kind of also giving like lulu row esque patterns i do think it's kind of odd that Etsy was one of the first ones that pulled up. There didn't really seem like there was like a website for it. Let's try another brand on here. Like I said, I've heard of Bryn Walker. I've heard of Flax. So let's go with Fanini. This one has a website and I can already tell. Oh, it's not letting me connect to their website though. That's super weird. I can tell though based on the photos and that like linen pops up, lag and look is definitely what they do. Okay. This is on a boutique called Twist Boutique and you can see it's in between 50 and $150 because it looks like 149, 129, 139. Definitely very lag and look, very layered. So I definitely do agree with that. So it did give me some lag and look brands. So if I'm trying to commit brands to memory, that's pretty interesting. Let's see what it happens if I ask for bohemian brands. Let's again put those parameters in 50 to 150 because I don't really run across like luxury brands. So to get them to pull like these expensive, outrageous luxury brands, like it's just not going to work. So can you name five boho brands that retail between 50 to $150? Free people, of course. Spell and the Gypsy. Spell and the Gypsy is definitely boho. They do sometimes retail for more than 150, but they do have some pieces that will go in that range. Oh, show me your boo boo. But it is technically bohemian pieces just because I don't like reselling it. Like it does fit in the parameters. Jen's Pirate Booty. Yeah, that one's definitely really bohemian. They do a lot of collaborations with free people. And then Raga, this is sold typically at like TJ Maxx. And again, it's oversized, it's bohemian. So it is very accurate on giving you brands. So like, honestly, if you ever wanted to curate your own bolo list, you'd probably have to do some more additional research. Like, but it will give you a good starting point and a good base to give you brands that fall into a range, like a category. So boho brands. And then what I would do is I would like go to Poshmark or eBay, however you look up comps. And I would look up comps on these brands to see if they are like brands to actually commit to memory and deem like a bolo brand. So I mean, it's doing a really good job of giving me just some brands to know. So definitely a benefit there. Let's see what happens if I go to my Poshmark closet. What happens if I copy the title of a listing I already have 
and I put it in here and I asked for it to give me a description. Okay, so we have Knox Rose Light Blue Peasant V-neck Dress Medium. So again, it's giving me just like paragraphs. Brace your free spirit. So I didn't really give me anything too great. So again, if you're just wanting to go through your closet and just have those like keywords and those paragraphs of text, that could be something you additionally add. I don't think I'm going to do that, but it's definitely an idea if you're wanting to like maybe get your SEO up. Let's see what resale websites it's gonna tell me to use. So let's see, can you tell me the most popular clothing resale websites? Poshmark, of course. It's the leading online marketplace. Thread up. I mean, they're not wrong. ThreadUp has a large selection, but your payout's gonna be bad. Depop, eBay, and Mercari. So all of you that thought there was some secret app out there, there's not, it's the ones we already know. Five must-have tools for reselling. Let's see what it offers. Let's see if it can give us some good advice. Smartphone with a high-quality camera. Yeah, I use that. Measuring tape, clothing steamer or iron, a scale to ship, inventory management software or app. Like, that's definitely some accurate advice. Like, I'm not gonna say it's wrong. So, honestly, why listen to YouTube when you listen to Chat GPT? Am I right? I'm sort of kidding, but not really. Like, obviously, I can't teach you everything, but it's giving some solid advice. Okay, let's see um, what YouTube videos it thinks that resellers should make okay popular let's again put a number on it six popular reselling YouTube video ideas this will be our last one thrift store hauls how-to guides reselling tips and tricks behind the scenes vlogs and Q&A sessions and income reports okay let's see what it says Thrift store hauls, I think everyone enjoys a good haul. Everyone likes to vicariously shop through others, see what they can find, so definitely good. How-to guides, my how-to guides have like never done that well, but I know if you're kind of a better editor, you have more notoriety, they can do well. Reselling tips and tricks. These are really popular because I think people want like an easy way to get money and so a lot of people do tips and tricks to like cast a dream but I don't necessarily know how accurate they are. But they're not wrong in that they are popular. Behind the scenes vlogs. Take your viewers behind the scenes of your reselling business with vlog style ideas. Show them what a typical day looks like for you as a reseller including sourcing trips, listing items, packing orders, and more. I definitely think that reselling vlogs can be interesting if you're like already invested into the YouTuber and you want to know like more about their processes and their personality. Q&A sessions, just answering questions about reselling. Again, I think you like need kind of more of a fan base of viewership that's like really loyal to you to make that one work. And then the last one's going to be income reports. Share your monthly or yearly income reports to viewers. I wish more people did this um, because I think there's a lot of exaggeration out there when it comes to the finances. I wish more people did do like an actual showing proof number breakdown talking about gross versus net, including what they pay for the item, etc. I would definitely watch more income reports. If you go have a YouTuber that's like really honest about how much they monthly net, leave that down below because I definitely do think that is interesting. So that is some ideas on how to use chat GPT. Personally, I found the style tags and the brands to be the most interesting. Like I said, I don't think I'm really going to use their, you know, three to four paragraph long descriptions. I, again, can barely get a buyer to read a one sentence description. But these style tags, I thought were just really good ideas to get some additional keywords and additional eyes on your item, especially like it's going to flag the SEO and you're gonna get more hits that way. And then I thought the brands were like pretty accurate, especially when you narrow it down to a price point that you're looking for. Like it's not a bad idea to maybe 
use chat GPT to learn about some new brands if you're looking for a certain aesthetic or style or maybe try it even on a broader range and see what it comes up with so that is my video i hope you guys got some ideas on maybe how to incorporate ai or maybe now you know like you really don't want to ever use ai for your reselling business if you did enjoy this video and you have any ideas for additional videos in the future let me know in the comments down below please do make sure that you give this video a thumbs up and if you are a new viewer please do hit the subscribe button thank you for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video bye